fun. You know, we got to kind of give in to all the cheesier desires that you have. You know, at the beginning of the series, I got a lot of comments online. Why didn't you just use a bodybuilder painted green? And I would think, just wait, it's coming. AlexMediaJoeBlow.com. Hi, Kat. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm fantastic. So I watched the finale with two of the toughest critics that I could find, my 14-year-old and my 16-year-old. And they were jumping up and down, freaking out with how phenomenally they loved this episode. And my 16-year-old went to bed. He shouted down the stairs and said, best Marvel episode ever. He yes. <laughs> he loved it. And I know that there's been that vocal minority online that have criticized every single decision that the show has made along the way. This is a massively risky way to finish the season. Did it feel that way when you were making it? Uh, absolutely. I mean, one fun fact about production is that we started with the finale because, um, you know, we shot it all together and not in order. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in that room with Tatiana and Mark and Tim and Jamila and John and, you know, every single character and everyone saying, what is happening? And I said, it's supposed to be confusing. You know, that's kind of the point. Um, and it was definitely, um, it always felt a little risky and it always felt like we were one step ahead of, you know, the negative criticisms that mm -hmm. were definitely you know, we always knew we're going to be hurled at the show. And what's been funny to me is, you know, I've, I received at the very beginning a lot of really mean kind of trolly comments. Sure. And they've completely dried up because I think now people realize that they're playing right into our hands. <laughs> And I think that the there's so much that happens here and because it is so meta and people were talking about, well, Deadpool was fourth wall breaking, but She-Hulk is fourth wall breaking, but this goes so beyond breaking the fourth wall and jumps into something totally different. And just the whole character of Kevin behind the scenes, was that something that, you know, did Kevin Feige, did he feel comfortable with that? Did he think it was hilarious? How did that come out? I mean, it really felt like I and I it really felt like it was Kevin's idea in a way. Oh. You know, there's a <laughs> I mean, there's a meta level to it where mm -hmm. it, Kevin does make all the decisions. Kevin is so hands on. Kevin is such a huge part of every decision that we all make um, at Marvel. And I think that was a big surprise to me because you look at how many projects they have going on mm -hmm. and you think there's no way he's hands on on all of them, but he really is. And so that was always a conversation with him. Um, and he was a part of that, you know, from the very beginning and integrating the baseball cap into the design of the robot was, <laughs> was, I, I remember that was a really funny conversation with Kevin because he didn't want it to really be him, but we also obviously wanted to nod to the real Kevin Feige. And with the, there's like lots of little nods and comments in here. You know, there's a reference about movie and they keep calling it a season. And I know when we spoke before the season uh, debuted, you talked about kind of you already have another project that you're working on. Have there been conversations at this point about a season two and where that would go? Or is that still up in the air? That's still up in the air. Um, yeah. You know, she's very expensive as we joke about in the finale. Yeah. Um, so we we shall see where she appears next. And Daredevil coming in, everybody was waiting for the whole season until that was going to show up. And then you got the, uh, the privilege of directing the episodes with Matt. What was it like bringing Charlie into the mix? Um, Charlie's incredible. And you instantly realize why he's such a fan favorite because he's so, he's so thoughtful and he's so invested as an actor and, the character is just so real. And it was fun to see that lighter side of Matt Murdock. And I think, um, you know, it was, it was exciting to see the audience anticipation and know what was coming. And episode eight is really one of my, by far one of my favorite episodes. So I was so excited for the audiences to see him and, and see him in this, in this new incarnation. And as a, as a director, looking back now that the season is all out there and it's fully completed, what, for you was the biggest challenge logistically of any of the episodes you directed? Um, 
you know, the whole thing was a logistical challenge because when you're dealing with a CGI lead who is supposed to be in the real world, everything is a challenge. Um, And, uh, you know, definitely that lodge scene with every single character in it and shooting that at the beginning before we'd really established a tone and before anybody knew what was going on was a huge challenge. Um, And, and, you know, it, it speaks to the trust of the actors because they really did have to dive into the deep end um, and trust that we knew what we were doing, even though it's, you know, the whole purpose of that scene is, is chaos and confusion. And, you know, we wanted audience to go, wait, what is happening? What, this is the conclusion of the series. And then, you know, obviously turn it on its head, um, you know, when we introduce the smashing of the fourth wall. And with uh, with all of the CGI elements that are in there, this story really did end up feeling more of Jen Walter's story than She-Hulk's story. So the balance between both sides of that, did you find that there were any, any moments that didn't make the final episodes that you kind of hoped that would still be out there? Um, no, I can honestly say that I am so happy with where it landed and that Um, there, you know, there's always things that end up on the cutting room floor. And I always felt very strongly with this show that less is more and that the pace, you know, should be fast and the episodes should be tight and compact. And so I'm really happy with where it landed in terms of, of length and pace. And yeah, there's, there's really nothing that I regret cutting. And I really love the, at the, in the final episode, the retro throwback to the incredible Hulk sequence. What was that? That looked like it was a lot of fun to shoot. It was so fun. You know, we got to kind of give in to all the cheesier desires that you have. You know, at the beginning of the series, I got a lot of comments online. Why didn't you just use a bodybuilder painted green? And I would think, just wait, it's coming. Um, And so it was it was fun to, you know, it was fun to pay homage to the Bill Bixby version. And um, and it was also fun to kind of lean into the tropes of that era. Well, now that the whole series is out, I, I'm really glad that it turned out the way that it did. It was a whole lot of fun. Congratulations on the whole thing. And I hope that you don't hear any more complaints because now people can see how great it really is. Oh, thank you. And I'm so glad that your teenagers enjoyed it. I also have a teenager and, um, th- you know, they definitely are the the honest voice. <laughs> they definitely are. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.